All right, class. First off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today's lesson, uh, we're going to be talking about the post effects of Pax Ramona and what made Rome so great during that Pax Ramona time. You're going to find out there's a dirty little secret to how and why Rome became so big and grew so well and uh, how they were able to do certain things. Um, and it's pretty... The answer is pretty obvious, but you might be surprised at the same time. All right, so let's go to the warm-up picture, which is right there. All right, so the warm-up question, the one question, the first one, asks you to analyze the picture and tell you what's going on here. You know, and the second one says, based off this, what you're seeing, this is a sport. What sport? modern day sport is like this you know so in class we had um a couple people um give certain different sports that are similar to this okay and um some involve horses some involve modern um tools okay so think about it and write your response okay pause the video because we're moving on in three two one. All right. So Rome had social programs and had done some large construction projects. Uh, so that warm-up picture that you saw, that building was called the circus. I know we tend to think of circus like with the clowns and the tents and things like that, you know. Uh, but that's what it was called. That's what that building is called. Okay, it's called a circus. They also build bridges, theaters. Sorry about that. Dinner was just delivered. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they build bridges, theaters, uh, basilicas, aqueducts, you know, uh, things to get water from one side to another, temples and things like that. So they had a lot of construction done and it really made Rome look unique and it was made more beautiful and things like that. Now, Emperor Trajan did a very unique thing and that he had a social program that helped poor families in raising their kids okay now what do you mean by raising the kids they like took the kids and made them no 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 they basically uh like if the parents need to do something we'll watch your kids you know we'll teach them about uh the the gods we'll teach them you know, uh, how, you know what letters are and how to read things and things like that. So they were really truly educating the kids, but also watching them. So this is, if you want to say like the first schools, like true schools, sure. If you want to say like as a daycare type of thing, yeah, okay. But that's the thing. This um, program that Trajan thought of really helped out the future generation of Roman citizens. To become educated uh, at a young age and to continue that as they grew older. Now around 200 AD, the Roman Empire covered 3.5 million square miles. Now, nowadays it's kind of like, well, so what? Russia is that big. China is that big. But you have to remember back then, that was pretty impressive. That's a huge, huge country. And their trade was just as expansive. I mean, they traded us uh, as far north as the uh, British Isles, as far south as like Africa, and as far east as China. And some of these things these people had not seen before. They were like, what is this? This is called silk. These are jewels from this area and things like that. So it was just like they were getting all the world's, you know, stuff for, to trade and to buy so it was it was really interesting time back then now how did they build all these buildings roads aqueducts things like that i hate to say it, guys but they didn't build it themselves the roman citizens um that was usually done by slaves slavery in rome was huge now uh, back in the day a lot of times area if a country took over another country they would kill the people and things like that 
But it got to the point where some of them were thinking, well, why kill these guys? Why kill these barbarians? Why kill these other people when we can have them be our slaves? So those areas that they conquered, they basically rounded up people and sent them to Italy to be slaves. Now, there were really honestly two types of slaves. One who did things with their because of their knowledge and their skills, and then basically everyone else who was going to do like manual labor. The most popular slaves were Greeks. They were used as tutors, teachers, musicians, doctors, artists, shop assistants. Now, what that means is like they did inventory, they did the math to make sure everything, you know, they had enough in the store of stuff. You know, the accountants and stuff, they make sure the money is okay. Um, and craft people, people who built things with their hands. Now, they're slaves, but they were able to do these jobs. Okay. Why? Because, again, the Greeks were very educated. The Greeks were educated. They knew things. and They were taught. You know, so why have them be a cook or a gardener? When you can have them be a doctor or a teacher. Now, the other um, slaves, the barbarians, you know, the German barbarians and from the mid, mid, uh, Middle Eastern tribes and things like that, those guys were made to be cooks, valets, uh, waiters, and cleaners, and gardeners. Things that don't require much thinking, much skill. You can just do that. You know, I hate to say it, but that's the way they saw it. It's like, hey, this job's anyone can do that. So anyone can, you know, wait for a plate or clean it up, things like that, or tend to the uh, plants. You know, but it takes skill to be a doctor, to be a musician, you know, in order to educate. And this is another sad little fact thing. A Roman writer once wrote that it's actually cheaper to work your slave to death and replace him than it would be to feed them well, Make sure they have everything they need, all their needs are met, that they're, um, where they're staying is nice and comfortable. They're like, you know, that, that guy has cost way too much money. You might as well work them to death, and when they die, buy another slave and have that slave carry that dead person's body out. You know, so, yeah, it was pretty bad. I've had students in the past basically say, oh, if I was a slave back then, I would have uprised, I would have done all this stuff, I would have been like, and... There was people who did that, but one of the most famous ones was this guy named Spartacus, okay? He led a large slave uprising, and the thing is with him, he was a gladiator, you know, so he fought animals, fought other gladiators and things like that, so he knew how to fight, and he caused an uprising, and the slaves, the gladiators were able to escape. If I remember right, it was like Somewhere around the number of 25,000 um, slaves and gladiators escaped. But the Roman army basically rounded these guys up. Some of them, hey, they didn't want to be captured again. So they basically fought to the death. You know, and that's what happened. Um, but uh, Spartacus and his group, the group he was with, they fought the Roman armies and won several battles. But eventually, he was captured, him and his, the people he's with, and uh, he was killed. Um, 6,000 of his followers were crucified. Now, some of you guys know what that term means. Some of you guys don't. Basically, what it is is they get these boards, all right? They nail, they put a nail right through your wrist here, and they do the same thing with your feet, they nail you to the board and they leave you on a hill, a mountain, you know, or so even if it's a flatland, somewhere away where there's nothing out there, no shade, no nothing. And basically, you're going to dehydrate, you're not going to have any water, no food. Um, typically, what might happen most times, a lot of bugs would crawl up the wood. They would crawl up, up to the feet and start eating at the skin and some of that, birds would come by and start pecking in the face and the eyes and lips and things like that, you know, the arms. So yeah, it, it was not a pretty death. Very gruesome. Now at the end of the Pax Ramona, 
there was a separation between the rich and the poor. Um, the rich lived in these places called villas. Okay. Now the term villa is now used, you know, sporadically here and there. It's some neighborhood, you know, they tend to call it, oh, the Sparklingville Villas. It's like, uh, no, that's not a villa. That's just a condo, <laughs> you know. But the nice places were called villas. And the poor people lived in basically apartment blocks called insulates. Now, these things were not built with, like, the idea of, hey, we need to make these things last forever. They were built quick, fast, and in a hurry. I mean, we're talking within, like, a month or so. And a big building should not take less than a month. And these guys did that. No problem. <laughs> built it. And because of that, they were built very poorly. They would collapse all the time. And here's the thing, too. The floor was made of wood. You know, and it would catch on fire. Now, anyone who's ever barbecued and you have the dr really dry wood, you know when you put it on the grill, it lights up like that. And it just... It, catches on fire quick fast in a hurry and it'll burn up fast that's what happened to these floors you know now how did they catch on fire people had stoves people had candles and lamps you know to light up the the rooms and to heat up the the apartment sometimes hey things happen the candles fell um someone accidentally bumped into the lamp and it busted on the ground the oil and the the fire caught the oil on fire, and then there goes the floor. Uh, but the thing is, once they spread, it wasn't just like one room, here's the floor. No, the, the floors were shared with other rooms. So these things would just go through, and then they would just, the weight would just collapse and things like that. Now, one of the most famous fires that happened was during the time of Nero. He was an emperor. Um, he wasn't that great of an emperor, and some people uh, say the legend is that he played the fiddle as Rome burned. You know, so in that picture you see right there, you see him like playing the little instrument. Um, that's not true. The legend is not true. For one thing, the fiddle wasn't invented when he was an uh, emperor. So how could he play the fiddle if it wasn't even invented yet? Okay, but. That's the legend that people still believe. Some people still believe to this very day. All right, now here is your question. Of all the jobs available to the Greek slaves, you know, teacher, tutor, musician, doctor, artist, shop assistant, and craft person, um, which one would you rather have and why? So if you had to pick one of these jobs to do, and, and again, this, this is a job you're going to do for basically the rest of your life. You don't really get to change. That's it. Once you say that, once you do that, that's it. Um, which one would you go with and why? Why do you say this one would be better fit for me? And explain. Okay. So uh, once you finish this question, that's it for this lesson. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, double check to make sure your name's on the paper. Okay, in the front. So with that being said, you guys, you take care, you be safe, and I'll see you guys later, okay?